Hi boys, today I want to talk to you about uh, reciprocal graphs and um, I want to begin by looking at some fairly basic hyperbolas. If we look at this one here, y equals 1 over x, this is the one against which I want to compare other hyperbolas against because you'll notice there's a certain pattern about how we sketch them. So if y equals 1 over x, what can we observe? Well, uh, for starters, there's two branches of our graph. Um, there's one here, over here, the right-hand branch and the left-hand branch, and they're not going to meet. And the reason they're gonna, not going to meet is because they have things called asymptotes between them. Now, how do these arise and what are they? Well, you can't see them on the plot because um, they are, in fact, in this case, the x and y axes. But an asymptote you generally uh, denote with a dotted line, like I'm doing now, down the y-axis in this case and across the x-axis as well. Uh, well, close to it so that you can actually see them. Now, how do, how do these happen? Well, let's consider values for x. And what I want to do is look at um, what happens when x is 0. So, when x is 0, we have 1 over 0 is undefined. It's in, some people call it infinity. But either way, as x is approaching 0 from the, the right-hand side and also from the left-hand side, like that, um, this is approaching infinity. Okay, If it's approaching from the left-hand side, from the negative side, it's, uh, the function or the equation is tending to negative infinity, off down there. And from here, from this side, as x is getting to 0, closer to 0, we're getting larger and larger positive y numbers. Okay, So that's how this asymptote arises, the one on the y-axis. Now the other asymptote you can see is the one along the x-axis. And here we've got to consider what happens as x gets very, very large. Well, you can see perhaps here the graph is not that clear. But when x is 1, the function value would be 1 as well, or the equation would equal 1. 1 over 1 is 1. When x is 2, um, when x is 2, y is equal to a half. Let's say x is equal to 10. Well, y would equal a tenth. Let's say x was equal to a billion. Y would equal one billionth. <coughs> Excuse me. So y is getting smaller and smaller the larger the value of x. And it's approaching zero without actually reaching it. So that's how we come about that asymptote there. And you'll also observe the same happens in the negative direction. When x is negative 1, here, our function would equal, or our equation would equal, negative 1 as well. When x is equal to negative 2, our function would equal negative a half. And if, you know, if x was to get to uh, negative a billion, uh, y would equal negative 1 billionth. Very, very close to zero, isn't it, without actually reaching it. So um, we get, um, we get uh, our equation approaching zero in the negative direction as well. Now we can move our hyperbola around the number plane um, in various ways. Um, here we've got a, um, a plot of this equation here that you can see quite clearly displayed. Now we've got an x minus 1 on the denominator here, haven't we? Well what that's going to do is adjust our vertical asymptote because when we're plotting these things, we're always concerned about where the denominator is equal to zero. Because anything over a zero is going to give you an undefined value. It doesn't matter what this is. This will be undefined. And uh, that's going to result in an asymptote. So really, that's normally just a question of um, letting your denominator equal zero. So in this case, you can see that we're worried about when x minus 1 is equal to zero. In other words, where x is equal to positive 1. So it's just a little linear equation, isn't it? x minus 1 equals 0 is where our asymptote's going to be. So in other words, where x is equal to 1. So we could draw an asymptote in, and in fact we will draw an asymptote in where x is equal to 1. Okay? That's not very well done, but it should be a dotted line. Now, what about, um, is there a horizontal asymptote in this case? Well, yes, and it's where y is equal to positive 1. That's telling you where a, a horizontal asymptote is going to occur. And the reason is quite simply this. As x gets very, very large, 
in both the positive and negative direction, in both the positive and negative direction, as x gets very large, this is all tending to zero, isn't it? As we saw before in the previous example. That minus one's having very little, no effect at all, really. So as x gets very large, this is tending to zero, which means that y will approach zero plus one is one, and it'll approach that without actually reaching it. So that's pretty well the definition of an asymptote. A line that an equation or function approaches without actually touching. So I hope you can see now that uh, quite clearly we'll have an asymptote at y equals 1. So let's just uh, sketch that in. It's about here. Okay. So really for this one, um, it's it, by the way, the um, hyperbola is the same shape as in the previous example. Um, it's just, can you see the asymptotes have just moved from the x and y axes? Uh, and then we just can sketch the uh, curve in. We can also plot a few random points if we like, and that was not a bad idea. So if we were to select, for example, x equals 2, we get y equals 2 minus 1 is 1, so it's 1 plus 1 is 2. So where x is 2, we would have that equaling 1. Sorry, I meant... 2. Of course, when x is 2, we've got 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 over 1 is 1 plus 1 is 2. OK. OK, I need someone to press pause now. And I'd like you guys to have a go at plotting this one. You, you should find it quite easily. Just draw up a number plane. Uh, and what does that mean? It means you're going to move your asymptote. Uh, two units to the left of the y-axis, isn't it? It's counterintuitive. If you You've got a plus there, it's going to move left that way. And also the horizontal asymptote, well that's going to shift the whole plot down one unit, isn't it? So you'll have a, a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 1. Okay, so press pause as I say, and um, when you're done, let's say in three minutes time, press play again. Now with these uh, ones we're plotting now, um, it is possible of course to find the x and y intercepts. So um, I'd ask you to do that now with the uh, one you've just sketched. And um, So putting it all together, um, we can see that we've got an asymptote, a vertical asymptote, at x equals negative 2. That's what this is all about. And we've got a horizontal one at y equals negative 1. Additionally, we've got a y-intercept of 0, negative 1 half. Uh, there it is there, crossing the y-axis at negative 1 half. And an x-intercept at x equals negative 1. All those things should be indicated. The intercepts, clearly, you should label the asymptotes, you should label the um, axes, and then you're done. Right, we've seen how to shift the basic hyperbola around the number plane, up and down and across left and right. Now what we need to see what happens when we adjust the, um, the uh, values in this way. So... If we compare y equals 1 on x with y equals 2 on x and y equals 1 on 2x, which could be expressed as a half of 1 on x, uh, we'll see what happens to the uh, basic, basic hyperbola. What I'd like you to do is fill out the table of values for each of these three equations. So you need three of these rows here I'm pointing at. Uh, and, uh, and then plot the results. And what you're going to find is that the higher the number here, the more the curve is um, is from the origin. Okay. If you want to get your hyperbola closer to the origin, what you do is you increase the coefficient of x here. Okay. So press pause now, and um, when you've done that, 
press play again and we'll see what the results look like. Okay, so uh, this is what you should have got. Um, it's well labelled, I think, so you can... Oh, dear. So with this one, you've got um, you're going to have your standard uh, x or horizontal asymptote on the y-axis, aren't you? With the first one, um, and it's going to be shifted up. So it's going to be a horizontal asymptote going through y equals three. What about this one? This is kind of you've got to watch your all oh, plus there's a negative there. Um, so you've got your negative here. So once again, you'll be in the second and fourth quadrants of your number plane. The plus 2 down here is going to mean you're going to shift it, uh, the vertical asymptote from the y-axis to y equals negative 2, and you are going to shift the horizontal asymptote down to y equals negative 1. And you can work out something similar is going on here. Okay, thanks, and that's the end of this tape. Bye-bye. Don't worry, you didn't think I was going to leave you without the answers. So <clears throat> if you don't want to see the answers just now, rewind and press pause. When you're ready, here they are. Okay, so uh, the legend's down here, isn't it? So you can see what's going on. You can see which is which. Um, look, the first one was y equals a negative 2x plus 3. So you're expecting to see a horizontal asymptote at y equals positive 3. Um, if I was to draw it in, and why not, it would be along here, wouldn't it? And that one, y equals negative 2 on x plus 3, it would have an asymptote a vertical one along the y-axis as well. So you can see that uh, that's why it's the blue one. Uh, y equals negative 1 over x plus 2 minus 1, so that's shifted down uh, one unit. So it looks to me as though that's going to be the... the um, red one isn't it? You see the red one here? Uh, <clears throat> that's got a horizontal asymptote under the y uh, x-axis so that must be that one and finally that um, that leaves the blue one is it? Which is shifted up, one, no sorry the green one which is shifted up one unit and is shifted to the left the, the vertical asymptote shifted three units to the left, so that's the green one. Y equals negative 2 over x plus 3 plus 1. Okay, that's it.